Hello there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today I've got a quick workflow to share with you that I think is um, really useful um, which is how to create a shared parameters file uh, using Dynamo. Um, for people that have watched my channel for a while you might have noticed I um, don't have my glasses on, uh, I can't find them so <laughs> I'm just doing a video so this is what I look like without glasses. Um, anyway, back to the topic. So we're going to look at creating a shared parameter file and we're going to use Excel to name our parameters and tell them which group they belong to. So really handy. Um, so I've actually got a video about shared parameters and shared parameter files that you should probably watch if you're not really familiar with what I'm talking about, um, which covers how to set up a file manually um, and good practices for naming parameters, grouping parameters, etc. I'd like to thank um, Rim who sort of gave me this request through LinkedIn. Um, I hadn't tried this workflow before. I'll be honest, I typically have been setting up shared parameter files um, manually in the past. I've only had to set them up maybe three or four times and then work with the file from there. But I guess if you're just getting started with writing a shared parameter file for the first time and you know what you want to call your parameters and where to group them, um, there's some much easier ways to do this using Dynamo. So this is sort of what a shared parameters file looks like in Revit. Um, it's got essentially a parameter group um, that contains a whole bunch of parameters or shared parameters. And then each of these groups contains parameters in one file. And then the parameter itself um, has a few aspects. It has a type. Um, so for example, if it's an area parameter, its type is area. Um, as well as this, you can also add tooltips, uh, but you can only add the tooltip when you create the parameter. Once you've created it, you can't add the tooltip. So I'm going to be, I've already set up some data that looks a little bit like this. It's essentially just an Excel file, um, which I'll just jump to. And it has three columns. One of the columns is what I want to call my parameters. So in this case, I've actually just taken some parameter names from my actual shared parameter file. And I've made about 130, almost well, 140 parameters. So to set these up manually would take a very long time. And you can't really just write them in notepad format because you don't know what the GUID should be or the, the, the ID for the parameter. This is generated by Revit. So you can't usually safely generate parameters using this workflow. If you know your GUID, um, there's another node, I believe, in Archilab that can be used to build a parameter. Actually, no, sorry, it's Ingenious Loci, and that can do it. Um, but this one's going to generate the GUID uh, the, the manual way, so the way that Revit would do it for us. Um, as well as this, I'm just saying what the group they should all belong to is. You can see I've just got three groups that I'm putting these ones under. And then the type of the parameter. Um, so I'll show you how to see what parameter types are available, but essentially this is the name of that type that the parameter would be when you create it. And if you do know um, how to build shared parameters, you'll know that you only get a chance to set this type once. Once it's been set, you can't go back and change the type of parameter. So it's really important to get this right um, when you create the parameter itself. Anyway, um, let's just jump into Revit because um, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm using one custom package um, before I jump in. Um, so I'm using the Orchid package and I'll show you how you can use the Archilab package to inspect all the parameter groups um, that we can use. Uh, but essentially we're using the parameter create shared parameter node. Um, so it's a really simple little workflow. Um, I'm using Dynamo 2.3 today. Um, I believe that any version with Orchid this will probably work for. Um, but without further ado, let's just jump into Revit. So I'm just in Revit 2020 um, at the moment, and I'm just in a new family file. So I'm just in a new generic model because um, this node is built to run from a family and it will add the parameters to the family, but also to your shared parameter file. So let's make a shared parameter file, a fresh one. I'm just going to click on shared parameters on the manage tab and I'm just going to go create and I'm just going to create a new shared parameter file. Let's just say my SP file. And this is now the shared parameter file that Revit's pointing to. And the, the node is built to detect what the active shared parameter file is. So you don't have to specify this. It's important to note that no matter which project you go in, you'll always be pointing to this file. So this is the one that we'll be writing our parameters to. So let's just make a new Dynamo script. I'll just go to manual mode. I'll just quickly do a save as and just save my, save my node to desktop. And I'll just call this test two. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is import our Excel data. So I'm just going to look for import Excel. I might just go Excel. I think I just had it there actually. <laughs> import Excel. Okay, so we need to get firstly our file path to our Excel data. So I'm just going to browse and I've just put mine on my desktop. And then we're going to turn this file path 
into a file from file path. So file from path. And now this is a file object that Dynamo can understand. And then we're going to just call on the sheet name, um, whether we want to read everything as text and then whether we want to show the Excel file. So I'm just going to use a code block for this. And I'm just going to firstly say that my, my sheet name is just sheet one, which is the default Excel name. And then I'm just going to do a new line and I'm going to say we do want to read as strings because everything is text essentially. And then after that, I don't want to show Excel while I run this script and I'll just plug these in. Whoops. One, two, three. So this is a pretty standard workflow for importing Excel data. If you haven't seen this before, I'll just run. And what we'll get is we'll get um, a row. Every list is a row in our table, um, but we don't want our first row because our first row is just our headers. So Dynamo doesn't really care what our headers are called. We're just pointing the data to respective places in nodes so that the headers don't matter. So we're just going to use a, a node called rest of items. And it's basically going to drop the first item and give you the rest. So now we have no headers. And then we're also going to transpose our list. So we're going to flip our rows into columns. So now we can process our names, our groups, and our types as columns of data. So now we can see we've got one list for all our names, one list for all our groups, and one list for all our types. And then we're just going to split these using a code block. So I'm just going to say parameter names equals LST, and I'm just going to define a variable called list or LST. Um, I'm going to get index zero, which is our names. I'm going to go groups equals LST two. So we're calling on that or LST one, sorry, index one or column two. And then we're going to get our parameter types. And we're just going to go list at index two. And this will create lists for each of those. So it's going to split our data into three pieces that now we can direct into custom nodes. So you can see we've got our names, we've got our groups, and we've got our types. Um, so this is a really common workflow. So definitely, if you're not familiar with this, just practice this a little bit. Um, but now we're going to go to the actual script. So it's actually a really simple script. Um, what we're going to need to do is use the awkward shared parameter. So I think it's in create shared parameter, I think finds it. Yep, so we're looking for this node here, create shared parameter from awkward. And what it needs is a family document, which we have open. So we're gonna get a current document node. And because we're using awkward, we do need to use the awkward current document node, um, which is this yellow current version. So we're gonna plug that in. We also need our parameter names, group names and types, but we're gonna be working in a different way. But we've got three lists of data and we want to work across each index in that data. So the way that we can do this is by using a list combine node. But some things are always going to be the same. So one thing that doesn't matter is the parameters group, because this is the group that you tell the parameter to belong to once you add it. It doesn't matter because we're really just doing this to add it to our shared parameter file. So in this case, I'm just going to add it to a really common parameter group, which is PG underscore text. Make sure that's all uppercase. That's just a text built in parameter group. Um, you can either plug in the actual built parameter, built in parameter group or just a text name for it. As well as this, if you do want tooltips, make sure you add them in your Excel file and sort of treat them as an additional list of data. Typically, I don't add tooltips to shared parameters because it's very rare that the way a shared parameter is used is always the same. So to add a tooltip that always works for the context of the parameter is quite hard to do. But if you're really friendly and you really like your users and you, you want to put that extra effort in, try and add some tooltips. Um, as well as this, it doesn't matter if it's instance or reporting, because again, these are just conditions that exist at the level of the family, not at the shared parameter file. So in this case, I'm just gonna add a line to my code block here, and I'm just gonna say false. And I'm gonna say it's not instance, and it's not reporting, which means it will be a type parameter. I'm just gonna move this back here, and I'm just gonna call on the list combine node. I'll just look for a combine, list combine. So the way that this works is you have what's called a combinator function. The combinator is what's going to be run across the indexes of each list. So what we're doing in this case is combinating this parameter, or sorry, this node. And we're basically taking our inputs in the order they occur in the node by the inputs of the lists into the list combined node. So we're going to add our names, our groups, and our types. And what list combined will do is find Firstly, the name, the group, and the type based on the order of the lists and the order of the inputs, and it will run across each row. If you don't use list combine, from what I've seen, it tries to add every parameter to every group to every type, um, which is obviously going to cause a lot of things to happen that we don't want to happen. Instead, this just works across the rows in Excel.
Okay, so we're pretty much good to run the script now. So I'll just run my script. And it should take just a little bit of time because it's doing a lot of things. It's doing 140 rows at the moment. Um, so just give it a sec. It'll probably say not responding and freak out a bit. Maybe it'll try and hide behind Revit. But ideally, you'll see that the parameters have now been added and you'll just get a little output of what the parameter is. So now if I just go manage, share parameters, there you go, check it out. We've got all our parameters and they've all come in with the right types. You can see we have length. If I go to general and I find one of my is parameters, you can see it's a yes, no, or a visibility parameter. Um, and if we go and check out one of our text fields, it's come in as text. Um, so pretty cool, right? So that'll really help you speed up setting up your company shared parameter file if you don't already have one. And if you know what everything needs to be called, um, don't do it manually. Nice and easy, right? So thanks for that request, Rim. Really interesting workflow. Um, the files for this will be up on GitHub by the time this is released. So feel free to visit there and download if you're in a rush and you know don't have time to build the script with me. As well as that, um, I guess if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. I make about two videos a week and I am two for a while. Um, yeah, so, so feel free to join the community. But um, thanks for watching today and um, uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. So thanks and uh, take care and hopefully I'll find my glasses next time. <laughs> Bye.